Okay, I'd like to talk about an aspect of the activation bit vector machine, cognitive architecture, more specifically about an, an, um, a feature of its imagery component, namely the mental rotation feature. So the motivation is to work towards human-like AI um, that is empathic, conscious, creative. The um, basis is the um, vector symbolic architecture of Canalva. Then al also a logical language background um, in a special type of fuzzy logic, context logic. And um, I look at uh, complexity uh, theoretic uh, aspects. This is all being implemented and the experimental domain for the, uh, for the tests and so on is a spatial reasoning in the widest sense. So some example mechanisms um, with respect to, uh, to, the, to the experiments. Um, the atomic context logic is, uh, was presented at the, um, at the BICA conference in the summer, um, mental maps from language, and I'll say a bit more about that uh, in this talk as well, um, before we uh, focus on how uh, within this framework mental rotation can also be realized. So mental rotation is important for uh, other tasks, uh, for instance, uh, mentally following root instructions. And that's a higher level logic, CL0. And um, then on the uh, highest level, CL1, uh, we have more complex reasoning um, taking place. So, uh, for instance, imagination in, in ethical scenarios. Uh, is important for for the um, for the CL one uh, level. Okay, so um, where are the different logics here in this diagram? So up here we have the reasoning layer. Um, CL zero and CL one are um, fragments of first order logic and full first order logic equivalents. Um, then we have the atomic context logic here and the visualization component, which is key uh, to the task. All this rests upon the perceptual layer. So why imagination as a focus area? Um, it seems to be crucial to human intelligence. We read the problem, we try to picture it, uh, we look at the problem from different angles. So there is this visual meta metaphor in many, uh, in, in many aspects related to problem solving. And such a higher, lower dimensional vector representation of a problem seems to be helpful for us to solve problems. And um, the visualization feature of the activation bit vector machine could be a key. First question, um, if it helps with problem solving, is it tractable? And this is a negative uh, result. It's at least an exponential time. So it does not help in, in terms of, uh, it does not solve the uh, P equals NP question or something. It does not help with that. But it does help with another um, aspect. And an, another difficult problem is the symbol uh, grounding problem. Um, here I uh, cite Wikipedia in summarizing the symbol grounding problem. In cognitive science and semantics, the symbol grounding problem asks how it is that words, symbols in general, get their meanings and hence is closely related to the problem of what meaning itself really is. So they go on that this problem of meaning 
um, is also related to the problem of consciousness. So um, uh, we, if we have something that helps with a simple grounding problem, that would be very valuable towards human like AI. So now I uh, will quickly recite the, the BICA result. Um, so first of all, we, um, we will try to imagine um, what, what happens here. We have A is north of B and B is north of C. We can, uh, we can picture that A would be somewhere here north of B and B somewhere here north of C. So uh, we could say C has a north coordinate 1, B has north coordinate 2, and A has north coordinate 3. Now we can, um, we can parse this in a very primitive manner to generate um, a truth, a, a formula. Uh, phi from it, a logical representation, and I did that here. We have something like B and North, then A, C and North, then B. That is not too far away from, um, from a more proper linguistic analysis. And since this is just a formula, we can draw a truth table. Now the, um, the truth tables are the standard logical semantics for propositional logic. So we have a propositional logic formula here and then we, we get a semantics that is um, an in, in a completely ontology-free uh, manner. And um, you can imagine that the columns here below uh, N, A, B and C are um, something like the VSA bit vectors um, sorted uh, properly. Um, so that we can uh, analyze each of the possible combinations. Um, now the formula phi is this one here, and it's generated through the clauses here by, by deleting the zeros. Um, what we can now do is we can focus on different portions of phi with, um, with these by, by querying um, or just activating um, an object and the relation uh, north each time. So if we do that with A, and then this is really just standard uh, uh, propositional logic, A and N has this formula, has this um, truth table, and um, it it gives us a way to focus just on the area of phi that relates to A and N. And we can then um, build the truth table for A and N and phi. So we get all the zeros up here and then just this area um, where that we focused on is down here. And if we now do model counting, which is just summing up the ones um, in this truth table here, we get the sum three. Now if we do the same, now querying for B and N, highlighting those portions, so B has, uh, B and N has this truth table, and here we have zero, zero, so that does not contribute to anything here. And we have one, one down here, so that does contribute uh, something. And so if I uh, sum up the models, count the models for B and N and phi, then I get the sum uh, two. And if I do the same with, with C and N and phi, I get the sum one. And those are exactly our, uh, our coordinates. Now the question was, of course, does this scale? Can we really process text with it and so on? So we did the text map uh, experiment, a larger experiment um, with, uh, um, with this uh, longer uh, description by a person who knows an area uh, very well. 
And um, now we can, we can look at whether this scales and so on. And we can, uh, we can model, uh, we, can, uh, we can look whether uh, we can have more relations than just uh, north. So when we do that, and here we have north and uh, its opposite south, and we have east and its opposite west. And we can just model south um, by switching the arguments, or we could limit the language. Um, the only ontology we have in this whole um, maneuver in processing this whole text is to interpret is uh, by this arrow um, to have an, a separation between objects and relations, and uh, we could do without the opposites. We also have one pragmatics rule where we have one relation only, we set all other relations as equal. So where we just have north, we set east and west to be um, equal. All this together, we have completely ontology free processing of text and um, we can use the coordinates we get in this manner. So here we have for Middleton, for instance, the coordinate uh, five um, for the north dimensions and for the east dimension, we have six. We can put a, a dot at the coordinates six, five. And we did that here for, um, uh, for all the cities mentioned in the description. And um, we get this map, which pretty much matches what we would expect from, uh, from mental imagery experiments with uh, human beings. And if we compare that with a, a ground truth map, then um, we can see this, uh, this is very much uh, in line with uh, what we would uh, expect. So Pittsfield and Lennox, for instance, are here nicely lined up with Stockbridge and so on. Um, so all this um, means we have extracted um, something like, uh, like meaning. So we're um, one step closer uh, to uh, the simple uh, grounding problem and all uh, that lies behind it. Now, when mental rotation is a well-documented feature of human and, and uh, animal intelligence, uh, of mental imagery uh, generally, so here is a standard test. So the task is to check whether the um, symbols are, um, are rotated or, or uh, are, are flipped mirrored and um, there are different variants of the experiment you can also have it in 2d and 3d and the activation bit vectoring machine if it has a comparable mental imagery should be able to perform rotations humans uh, actually seem to perform uh, rotations so reaction times depend on the angle some animals uh, seem uh, actually better and faster than humans. Uh, they may not be doing uh, rotation, but having some, some other mechanisms. So now here comes the experiment. Um, we know that the activation bit vector machine can generate images from text formula. And now what we do is um, we, we have a text uh, that generates an image and we're turning the image to the right. Um, what happens then is that what was uh, north of um, is now uh, east of, and what was east of is now south of. Uh, south is the opposite of north. So what we have to do is um, in the truth table and on the side of the image, um, we have uh, to change the pure north uh, portions to become pure east. So um, N1, E0 uh, becomes E1, N0. And uh, pure east 
um, is to become cells. Uh, so it, it should be also the bits should be uh, flipped here and uh, then uh, you need to have the opposite so you switch uh, you use bit um, negation so if we implement that um, we could for instance here with a simple layout we have um, this whole portion ends up here um, so this doesn't really matter um, because we 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 as we flip the uh, as the two bits exchange the role and then uh, here um, east uh, becomes south so um, you can see how the uh, bits are negated now we can we can test how uh, how this works by performing uh, four rotations of a simple layout should get us again uh, to the same condition and here you can see <coughs> we have a0 a1 uh, a2 in this arrow shape now the arrow po points down to the left up and it's back into its original state So mental imagery, a key feature of human cognition. Mental rotations are a well-documented feature of mental imagery. A key feature of the activation bit vector machine is the ability to generate visualizations. And we showed that those visualizations can be rotated. Now conclusions, um, those portions here of the activation bit vector machine, um, the high level reasoning and the uh, visualization, the uh, imagery uh, turn out to be in, uh, in, in, in classes beyond NP. Um, then we have the maybe scalable if um, problem of uh, propositional logic reasoning and then we have the perceptual layer down here um, what this um, tells us is that um, imagination and reasoning may not scale um, so well um, as we scale up perceptual and associative power um, these portions may not be developed uh, at the same um, in in the same manner especially with the larger uh, problems so many properties of human intelligence depend on imagination including ethics um, for instance in anticipating consequences imagining future states of the world or imagining how um, others will feel a reasoner can be implemented based on um, the uh, vector symbolic architecture model of associative um, memory. It has many interesting uh, properties. Um, the complexity properties, uh, if you ask it satisfiability questions compared to that of other approaches, um, the visualization is costly. Um, it does not scale, but I would say it's priceless. We saw hints at it uh, being um, useful for towards the simple grounding problem, which is fundamental for meaning and consciousness. Um, and it uh, may be key for ethics. So given the complexity constraints, a large scale AI will probably not be significantly more intelligent than a human being or a small scale AI. And um, working towards a colleague small scale um, AI um, may be um, the way to go. 
yeah, thanks to my uh, collaborators on the experiment and to you for your attention and questions.